I hope you guys can't hear the fridge and the rooster in the background. Oh my God. Ava? Brofina? We have some special guests today. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you what's going on. There's a hair on my mouth. Let's try this again. Ooh, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to my channel. I am the Val Pal. If this is your first time, well then welcome. I'm sure for many of you it might be because we're talking about Animal Crossing New Horizons and who doesn't want to talk about Animal Crossing New Horizons? I can't think of a single soul. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. Talking about Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm trying not to actually clap because there's a really bad echo in here. <laughs> so I don't know if any of you guys have actually watched the Nintendo Treehouse Animal Crossing New Horizons gameplay. If you haven't, I highly suggest watching a little bit of that or at least the trailer for Animal Crossing New Horizons on Nintendo's channel because that's where a lot of these ideas and observations are going to be coming from. But of course, I'm gonna insert a lot of that footage into this video as well so that you guys have an idea of what exactly I'm talking about and referring to. So let's take it back to Animal Crossing City folk that was released on the Wii. I can't believe it's been that long since we actually had an Animal Crossing video game for a television console. I'm actually really excited that this is gonna be able to be played on a huge TV in my flippin' house. I remember Animal Crossing City Folk, and if you go back to that game to this day, it has some of the best Animal Crossing graphics I have ever seen. <sighs> With that being said, oh my gosh, I'm just picturing Animal Crossing City Folk on the Wii, but like times a million. Mind blown about how amazing that game looks graphically. I can't wait until it's released on the Switch. That's just something I wanted to touch on. If you take that and times it by a million, <laughs> be still in my heart. Have you guys seen the amount of detail in Animal Crossing's New Horizon just based off of the trailer and the Nintendo Treehouse gameplay? Ah! <laughs> if you look at the detailing on the grass in either of these two videos, it is nothing like what we had previously seen in Animal Crossing video games. There are actual, what seems to be shreds of grass. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for the different triangle and circle patterned grass and the classic circular dirt patches from the Animal Crossing GameCube games. I'm all for it. But the attention to detail in these videos is mind boggling. The grass, the clouds, the shadows from the clouds on the ground. The fact that your animal villagers can now be seen carrying around different items other than an umbrella and a watering can. The little footprints that you leave on the sand when you're on the beach. This is something so minuscule, but it blew my flip in mind. You know when you dig a hole in Animal Crossing and then you can use your foot to cover that hole back up? When this action is being used in Animal Crossing New Horizons, there's a little puff of dust, of dirt dust from the ground from you rubbing your foot across it. If you look at the different campfires and bonfires in the Animal Crossing New Horizons gameplay, the little wood on it is burnt and there's a bunch of little smoke coming from the fire and the flames and the flames look so real. I, I just, I just, I just. That's it, I just. With the way that this game looks, I feel like I am okay with waiting until March 2020. As much as that pains me to say that I have to wait until March for the new Animal Crossing video game, I think it's gonna be worth the wait, by far. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Future Valpal here to interrupt. So if you watched my previous video, you'll see that there were a lot of different, maybe I'm the only one who saw, but there were a lot of updates in that Nintendo Direct to Animal Crossing New Horizons, which nobody was anticipating, by the way. So since there were a few new updates and a few minuscule details that I was able to pick up on, I wanted to go ahead and add them into this video and even confirm some of the things that I had mentioned since this video was filmed on Sunday before the Nintendo Direct and this information was just released yesterday, it seems that some of my predictions were correct. Here I go waving my Apple Pencil. <laughs> Weird flex, but okay. So something I was going to touch on in the previous video that I actually didn't just because I felt like it was pretty obvious, but 
I don't want to ignore it this time around. It's the different weather and the weather impacts on the game. So wind is a really big thing in this new Animal Crossing video game. You can actually see the wind flowing through the trees as well as all the flowers and even the grass and weeds on the ground. It is there and it's very prominent. Of course, the weather is going to change depending on the season. So let's talk about seasons for a minute. During fall, it looks like leaves are falling from the trees, similar to the way the flowers and the leaves are falling during the cherry blossom festival. Piggybacking off of nature, the light from the moon actually reflects off of the different water sources, the rivers, ponds, and even the ocean, which was not something that was done before. I remember you could see the reflection of the moon in the water, but there was never really any sort of effect on the rest of that water source other than that one reflection. And as we continue to talk about the moon, the moon now can create shadows. I don't remember that ever being a thing in the previous Animal Crossing games. Now I want to talk a little bit about new features that I've noticed in the Animal Crossing gameplay that I've seen so far. The biggest thing is going to be crafting. If you guys have been paying attention to the recent trends on my channel, I have been playing Minecraft for the very first time ever. And to say the least, I am a fan. So of course, the first few things that I've noticed in these pieces of footage for Animal Crossing New Horizons is the fact that it almost has a little Minecraft twist on it. First of all, you have a crafting table, Tom Nook's crafting table, where you can craft different tools like an ax and a shovel and a net. You also wanna collect materials around the island to build all of these individual tools. So similar to Minecraft, I'm not sure if this is exactly how it's gonna work, but another thing that I'm taking away from Minecraft is the fact that you have a stone pickaxe, you have a gold pickaxe, you have an iron pickaxe, you have a diamond pickaxe, and all of those different pickaxes have different strengths and durabilities. When you watch the Animal Crossing New Horizons gameplay footage, the characters are actually seen going around and collecting different types of materials, whether that be clay, whether that be stone, whether that be hardwood or regular wood. I have a feeling that you can craft different levels of tools and their durability as well as their strength with those different levels of materials. I think some might be better than others, similar to diamond being better than an iron pickaxe in Minecraft. Hardwood would then be better than regular wood in Animal Crossing. The look of all of your tools, like your net, shovel, watering can, and even your ax has changed completely. This isn't something I previously talked about because it's pretty obvious, but I do think that it has to do with the different types of woods and durabilities, again, that I previously mentioned. Speaking of tools, in the Nintendo Direct, and in my reaction, I actually called this a kitchen because it looked like a little kitchen that like you buy for your children to play with. But as I got a closer look at what it actually was, it looks like there's a tool chest. Your own personal tool chest is what I think it may be so that you don't always have to necessarily use Tom Nooks. Maybe it doesn't have all the functionalities of Tom Nooks, but the very basics or the minimum of creating different tools. But yeah, it looks like you have your own personal tool chest or tool crafting table that you can actually move and is mobile with you. With collecting different materials, I've also noticed that you can sell weeds for money. Previously in other Animal Crossing games, when you pulled weeds, they didn't go into your inventory. They were pretty much useless. In this game, it looks like weeds have a little more of an aesthetic, depending on what you're going for. I'm curious to know if there are different types of weeds and different levels of weeds that are maybe more rare than others that sell for a higher bell price. So when filming this on Sunday, it seems to me that I was right about two things. I'm sorry if you can hear my cat in the background. He's playing with his toys on the floor. One of them was about selling weeds. It was confirmed in the Nintendo Direct that you can actually collect and sell weeds for bells. I don't know if it's gonna be a standard price or if there's going to be different rarities of weeds as well as different bell prices for those weeds. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the island layout. Unlike Animal Crossing New Leaf, it looks like they're going back to the classic look of the beach from the GameCube and Animal Crossing City Folk games. It's not gonna be a different level down from your island. It's actually all gonna be on the same plane. With that, it also looks like they might be bringing back double level towns from, again, Animal Crossing GameCube and Animal Crossing City Folk. 
in all of the Animal Crossing games that we've seen so far, it's almost been inside of a little valley, almost like you're barricaded in and there's been an end to your town in the back. Since this one is an island and like Tortimer's Island, there is no back or end to the town. If we look at the map, it does look like the back of your town on this deserted island has some sort of blockade. I'm very curious to see what that looks like. Now, I was never really this type of person, but I know, I have very well know that these people exist. Do you guys remember when you could go to the Dream Suite in Animal Crossing New Leaf and visit different themed towns? Yeah. Again, I was never this type of person. The amount of effort and dedication that takes to make your village look a specific way, it's a lot of work. I remember something that used to throw people off the edge was when a new villager would come in and place their house anywhere, which would then cause all of your hard work not all of it, but a lot of your hard work to pretty much be destroyed. Allegedly in this game, you might have some sort of influence on where villagers can and cannot place their houses. You can also have influence on where you can and cannot place your house. I feel like the way you might be able to pick the location of your house is gonna be very similar to Happy Home Designer. It sounds like I'm not the only one who's a little hype about Animal Crossing New Horizons. I don't know if any one of you was ever really a big fan of Animal Crossing Happy Home Designers, but you bet your bottom dollar I was. Of course I wanna build a house for my favorite flippin' villager. Of course I wanna make him a little cafe where he can go drink all of his matcha lattes, where all of them can talk about all the latest chisme. Who doesn't? Who wouldn't? I can't think of a single person. Just like I can't think of a single person who isn't gonna sit through this whole video and watch me talk about every little detail I've picked up from Animal Crossing New Horizons. Of course. So with Animal Crossing New Horizons, I really hope they implement a lot of the customization of Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. I know that they are implementing the fact that you can now move your furniture in half increments rather than whole. So you have a little bit more of a precise placing option when organizing your house. But things like curtains, things like lighting fixtures on the ceilings, things like doors to different rooms. Those are just a few that I can name, but I'm really hoping that that's something that they bring to Animal Crossing New Horizons. So I don't think that it's news that this is on an island. Animal Crossing fans, think really hard about this. What are some of the biggest benefits that Tortimer Island had for you in Animal Crossing New Leaf? If you don't say catching rare beetles and selling them for a ridiculous amount of bells to Tom Nook, then you're Lying. That brings me to the thought that are there going to be these exotic beetles available on your island so you don't have to travel between the hours of 9 and 11 p.m. to Tortimer Island to catch these rare beetles to then sell them to Tom Nook to then pay off your debt and decorate your house? If that hasn't crossed your mind, I think you're lying. And now if it hasn't and it just did, it's all you're going to be thinking about. So I'm sure everyone is wondering a lot about what the different villagers, the classic villagers, what are they all going to be doing? Well, I can tell you right now that Tom Nook has his own little shack where you have the crafting table and you can buy and sell goods. I'm curious to know if that shack is gonna be upgraded. I don't know why I'm calling it a shack, it's like a tent. But yeah, I'm curious to know how previously you would go from nooks to nookway to nookingtons. I know I'm skipping a few, but you get the idea. I don't know if Timmy and Tommy are gonna be taking on that responsibility from Nook. I've noticed in a few of the clips that I've seen that Timmy and Tommy can actually be seen walking around the island holding red flags. I don't know what the red flags are. It kind of reminds me of the idea of like a walking salesman, similar to Kix when he comes into Animal Crossing City Folk or Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, but he's a walking salesman like Sahara or Gracie or the turnip lady. I don't remember her name. Oh my God, the turnip lady. Also with the new crafting table, I feel like it kind of takes away the point and purpose of retail. I mean, that's what the crafting table there was all about. It was about them making you customizable furniture and items, but it seems to be that that is actually in your hands now. What I've also noticed from this is that you actually need to make items to then combine them to make other items. For example, in the Nintendo Treehouse gameplay, they craft a campfire. They take that campfire 
They then go find wood, and with that crafting table, they combine the wood material and the campfire item together to make a bonfire. So it seems to me that there's gonna be a lot of stackable items and a lot of things that you may have to combine to create other bigger items. So you're still going to need to buy certain items from Tom Nook and Timmy and Tommy that you can then use with other materials and items that you've made to make other things. Let's talk about Nook Miles and what the point of those may be. So this was something I really wanted to pay attention to when watching the Animal Crossing gameplay. I feel like Nook Miles has actually given people somewhat of a structure and an end goal and almost like a purpose for playing Animal Crossing. It looked like in the gameplay, there were certain things that you could do that could then accumulate Nook Miles that could then be traded for, whether that be travel, something I was thinking it could be traded for would be rare items, similar to the ones that Gulliver would give you when he would wash up on your beach. I was also right about exchange Changing Nook Miles for special items. That also was confirmed in the Nintendo Direct, but it seems like a lot of the simple actions like planting trees and pulling weeds are gonna actually be worth a lot more than just gratification and personal preference. A lot of these simple actions are now gonna be rewarded with Nook Miles. Since there are a lot of different things that you can now do on the island, inventory now actually stacks. So if you catch 10 squid, they're all gonna be in one little squidly section in your inventory with a little badge on the corner that tells you how many of that item you have in your inventory. Your whole inventory isn't just going to be 10 squids. So this is going to expand your inventory by so much. I don't know if it caps off at a certain number, like 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, but it's still going to be a lot more space in your inventory rather than the classic 15 pockets that you got in previous games. And something that they did talk about in this gameplay is the fact that there is going to now be fishing bait that you can craft. I think this is probably going to be very self-explanatory, but although this is a guess, I can't believe that I'm too far off or that anyone has who has made this assumption is too far off, but that bait is more than likely going to be used to catch certain rare types of fish that you maybe wouldn't be able to catch on a normal day. I remember in Animal Crossing when you had to fish a certain time of day, a certain time of the year, if it was raining, if it was not raining, to catch a specific type of fish or even bugs. With this bait, I feel like it's going to increase your chances 100% or at least a small percentage to catching a specific type of fish outside of the window that they are normally available at. Or maybe just all together. Maybe you can't catch a specific type of fish without the bait but I guess we'll find out. The next few things are just very minor details, but I have the eyes of a hawk, all four of them, and you best believe I picked up on these. In the top left corner of your game, you have a little red badge and it has apples in it, and then it has a number next to it. And when you eat an apple, that number actually went up from six to seven. Then when you dug up the tree to then replant it somewhere else, that number in the corner then went from seven back down to six. So this leads me to believe that you might actually have to eat <laughs> in this Animal Crossing game in order to perform certain tasks that require a certain amount of strength or stamina. I don't think that they're gonna take it as far as Minecraft or The Sims where you have to eat to simply stay alive, but it looks like eating fruits is gonna play a bigger part in this Animal Crossing game than it had in previous games. Also, there are now giant mushrooms. I'm guessing if you leave your mushrooms unharvested, they can get to about this size, but how could you have missed this giant mushroom in the middle of this Nintendo Direct? I'm assuming that the mushroom is also worth a lot more than a regular mushroom. As far as if it has a purpose, I doubt it. I do think that is solely for aesthetic reasons as well as a way for you to continue to accumulate more bells. But it's huge! That's what she said. These last few things that I was able to pick up on in the Nintendo Direct are going to mainly be focused around your villager. The animation for the clothing, I was gonna mention this on Sunday, but I really didn't think it was that big of a deal until I saw the clip of the villager walking around in her dress, and I thought it was insane. The way that her dress and all of the different clothing actually moves with the villager, it's a pretty small, but pretty game-changing detail. Quite literally game-changing. Not only that, but you can wear backpacks now. Everybody knows I'm a sucker for a good backpack. So this is just gonna be another way that I can customize my character to really make me feel like I am the Animal Crossing villager. 
So let's talk about villagers. With this new game, a lot of questions have arised about where all of the previous villagers are going to be. And I'm talking about the villagers like Mabel and Sable and Label, Pete and Pelly. Where are Captain Tortimer and Rossetti? A lot of speculation with Rossetti that a lot of people are hoping for with that new autosave feature is that Rossetti has actually retired and that you can find him and his brother somewhere underneath the depths of the island in their little mole hole, relaxing. It could be their invention that they've actually worked really hard on so that they could end up retiring and reap the benefits of such invention. Although, and I'm sure you can relate, myself and Rossetti have had some rough times. I think we can all agree that we really want to see him in this next Animal Crossing release. So Cap'n and Tortimer, <laughs> is Tortimer still stuck on his island? Is this now his new island? Has Isabel completely killed him off? Find out in my previous Animal Crossing theories video. <laughs> in a lot of the previous games, Cap'n was actually the one to drive you into town. He was also the one who would row you on his little boat and sing sweet nothings into your ear while traveling to Tornimer Island. I wanna know, is Cap'n driving my plane? Is Cap'n taking me to different islands? Is he even in this game? What about his family that was on the island? Where did they all go? And Tornimer for that sake, is he still on the island? Is this now his island? Are we gonna have a a funeral for Tortimer. He's a turtle though, so he lives forever. I think. I think we might be lucky enough to find Cap'n traveling from island to island, assuming there are other islands to travel to, or even flying us into the deserted island on our little nook traveling airplane. <laughs> In the Nintendo Direct, you also caught a quick glimpse of your transportation to the island. If you take a close look at the name of the airlines that actually brings you in, it's called Dodo Airlines. So I'm curious to know if there's gonna be a new character that's gonna be introduced with this Dodo Airlines. That then brings me back to what I talked about previously in this video when I recorded it on Sunday. I thought maybe Cap'n was gonna be the one to fly you in on the plane. That might not be the case any longer, or it still could be. Cap'n could very much be employed by Dodo Airlines. <laughs> yeah, those were just a few things that I wanted to add on to this video to keep it updated, to keep it fresh, to keep it funky. All right, this is Future Val signing off, and I'm gonna let Past Val take it from here. I'm really hoping that Retail and the Able Sisters and even Shampoodle are gonna be things that, like previous games, you're actually able to upgrade to. But of course, that'll be once we get things a little more inhabitable. Regardless, I'm really excited to see who is gonna make an appearance in this new game, who might not, and where their stories are gonna continue from here, as well as mine, and as well as your stories. Those were just a few of the things that I was able to take away from the short videos that I watched, as well as a few of my ideas and thoughts on the new Animal Crossing New Horizons game. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more of the latest, hottest coverage on all things Nintendo, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, peace out.